Okay, so windings. Windings, as I mentioned, are one or more layers of material that are wound onto the outside of the core. So you've got your core here, and these here are windings. So there's, as you can see, two sets of windings there. Um, this is what we would call a round, wound, round wire winding. You can see it's sort of a cylindrical wire. And this is what we would call a flat wire winding. And for most um, fretted instruments, uh, I say most because they also do use some flat, flat wire. Most um, fretted instruments will use a round, round wire on the outside, and most of the orchestral instruments will use a flat wire on the outside. We'll talk about that in two seconds. So why do we wind strings? Why don't we have just like a, a core? If I make a solid steel core string, why don't I just have a great big cylinder of steel? Make there's, there, to, there's friction that's needed, yeah, that's a good point. Anything else? Change the tone color. Tone color. To get the tension right. Tension. Your, um, at lower tension, it's more, it's more weight. Okay, okay. Yeah? To stop it from breaking easily. That's actually a good point. Um, so, the main reason we wind strings, for all these are good points. I'll, I'll address all of them in a second. Um, there are two qualities a string needs to function properly. And one is that it be perfectly uniform, and the other be, is that it be perfectly flexible. So when, it, when I say perfectly uniform, I mean the exact same in density, mass, and construction from one end to the other. And the, other, and the uniformity, I'm sorry, the flexibility means the exact same amount of flexibility all along the string. So you can't have like a stiff area here and a flexible area here, stiff or whatever. So it has to be the same amount of flexibility. If it doesn't have these qualities, it tends to vibrate improperly. And when it starts to vibrate improperly, then the, the, the actual note that we hear starts to get more and more out of tune and starts to become what we call a false. So if you've ever heard the term false strings, has anyone ever heard that? It's something you get a false string. Um, false strings can occur because of many different things, but usually the reasoning is that the string has become imperfect in some way. It's not. It's either um, become less flexible or less uniform. It can be ca caused by many, many different things. So what we need when we add windings is we're adding mass to that string, right? Because when we vibrate the string, it's vibrating a certain amount of mass. And that's causing the note that we hear. So if we need to make this note a little bit lower, we need to add mass to this string in order for it to vibrate at a lower pitch. Well, if you keep a adding mass horizontally and we just keep adding like you know core material, this string is going to get really thick and too stiff to vibrate properly. So we wind the string this way in order to ensure enough flexibility all along the string while still adding mass. Okay, so why do we use flat wire? This goes back to some of our points here. One of the big reasons we use flat wire is very, very simple. We use bows and we need a flat surface to bow on. We need to adhere our bow to something flat because it's almost impossible to use a, a round wound string with a bow because it's, it's, it's very gro grooved on the top. So your bow doesn't stick. Um, the other thing that flat wire does is it helps to achieve that word that I talked about earlier, higher damping. So I'll talk about what that is in a second. Put this down after we look at this. This is the motion that is achieved when the bow is properly engaging the string. And it's important to um, understand this because it's not the same as a, f a guitar string vibrating. When you strike a guitar string or strike, even if you strike a bowed string, um, once, with, with energy once, the string does vibrate in, in an ellipse. So it vibrates back and forth, like you might imagine it to. But when we bow the string, we're in constant contact with that string, and we're actually not vibrating it this way. There's a, a little corner that's traveling very quickly around, so you can't see this with the naked eye. But if you look on YouTube, um, you can actually see slow-mo uh, video of um, bowed strings. So if you look at like 
slow-mo violin string or something like that, you'll be able to see this weird little corner that travels around. It's just really important and that's why we actually have to have that flat wire to engage that string properly. Um, and this is an image of the winding machine that we use. So not all companies use a winding machine like this. This is um, the, probably the, the most advanced winding technology uh, in the industry. But um, it's basically the same concept across all string makers. It's a very, very old concept. It's the concept of the lathe. Um, so basically, the core is mounted between these two black cylinders here. And these cylinders have the ability to mount more than one string. So this particular machine can hold up to six different strings. Um, and then each one of those strings, those, the cores, is spun in place. And these carriages with the, um, the wire on them, these are the wrap wires here. So these are all the different types of windings, that and then up here as well. So those windings will come in contact with the string, the core, and then wind its way down from one end to the other, and then reset and wind another winding. Does that make sense? All right, so damping. This is my favorite subject because it's like something that we never think about as bowed players, and yet is so vitally important um, to the sound we make and the experience that we um, have with our strings and our instruments. So what is damping? It's very simple. Damping is the process of controlling a string's resonance. So the more damped something is, or more dampened something is, the less resonant it is. It makes sense, right? So for instance, if I ring a bell and it resonates, and then I touch it with my hands to stop it, I'm damping that bell, right? I'm damping the resonance of that bell. So why is it important? Well, it affects a couple different things. One, because it affects the string's resonance, it affects how bright or dark the string sounds, right? So a string that is more resonant, is more ringy, is a little bit brighter to the ear. We pick up a little bit more of the higher frequencies, and so it sounds a bit brighter to us. Um, a, conversely, a string that is less, uh, that is um, more damp, sorry, is darker to our ear because it's less resonant and we don't hear as many of those highs. The other thing, and more importantly, the thing that it affects is the bow response. Okay? So does everyone know what I mean by bow response? How quickly the bow interacts with the string and how quickly the string responds to our bows? All right. Yes. You're with me. All right. So um, the simple uh, physical property of vibrating systems is that the longer it takes for those vibrations to die down, the longer it takes for the vibrations to start up. So if I have something that is very, very resonant, whether it be a bell or a string, it's going to take a lot longer, a lot more energy to start up, okay? So for guitarists, this doesn't really matter because if you're using a pick or your fingers and you're just strumming, you're putting all the energy in once and that energy you know, it's, it's in the string, and then you don't have to worry about it. And what you want is the string to resonate for a very, very long time. You don't want to strum and then have it die out right away, right? But for people who play with a bow, if we have a string that's too resonant, every time we change the bow, we're stopping and starting the string, right? If the string is super resonant, every time we want to stop and start it and change direction, it's going to be a fight. It's going to feel like you're... you're pushing an ocean because it wants to go in one direction and you want to go in another. So we as bowed players really need a certain amount of damping inherent in every string. So pretty much across the board, all of our strings are a little bit more damped than um, all, all, other, all the fretted strings. And if you've ever played like really cheap strings, like, like no-name strings or some strings that you got off you know, somewhere mysterious. <laughs> um, if you've played really, really cheap strings, a lot of those strings, um, the reason that they, they don't sound so good, or one of the reasons they don't sound so good, is because they don't have any damping in them. They're just probably just, you know, steel wire with one winding or something, or sometimes just a steel wire. And that is, is very, very hard to control, and it usually sounds very brash and ugly. Yes? So what, are you, what are you using to I'll talk about that. Okay. What, is a, what a good question. <laughs> um, so how does it happen? Um, there's three ways. I'll, I'll get to your question in like 30 seconds. So 
The first way that damping can happen is by the interaction of any materials in your string. So that naturally, damping happens just by things rubbing against each other. So if you have a core and you have a winding, the core and the winding rubbing against each other is going to start dissipating those vibrations. And it's going to naturally add to the damping level. If you put another winding on it, it's going to also dissipate more vibrations, another winding, et cetera, et cetera. So the more stuff you have in there, the more complex the string, the more it's going to be uh, naturally dampened. And that's why flat wire um, is important for us for damping, because flat wire touches the core all along its sur um, surface of one side, right? Versus round wire, which only touches the core at one point along its cylinder. Okay, so artificially. The next way that um, damping happens, and this is to answer your question, um, is string makers will put additional things in the string to, um, to increase its damping naturally. So uh, some of those materials can be like synthetic fiber windings. So you might put a nylon winding in there. So one of the windings might not be metal. It might be just a nylon winding. Nylon won't naturally add a lot of mass to the string, so it won't ne necessarily change the tension very much but it will add damping. So, you know, there's many strings that have an, an extra little something in there. Um, one of the things that we do, and some of the other string companies do as well, is add a, what's called a damping compound in there, which is basically a very, very thick, viscous gel that sits between the core and the first winding. And this gel just sits there, it doesn't dry out, it just adds to the damping level of the string. The last way that damping can happen is over time. Naturally, our strings corrode, and when we play them, stuff gets on them, right? All sorts of gunk from our bows, from our fingers, oils, moistures, all that stuff gets on the string and starts the corrosion process and adds elements to the string. So whether they be like little corrosive elements or actual rosin elements, all those things will help um, dampen the string over time, actually quite quickly, you know. Um, so you know, over time, if you play a string, you'll notice it gets darker and darker in color, right? In, in sound color, right? And that's because the damping uh, level of that string is getting higher and higher.